Hey guys, uh, welcome to the stream. We had uh, a very exciting round two um, with uh, Shane uh, taking on Miles Eldari as well as uh, Dan's League of Votan, uh, also playing um, Gary's Black Templar. Uh, we'll just jump right into the games. Uh, I had pr predicted um, a CSM and a Votan win, so we'll see. Uh, we'll just go through the games and, and see what happens. So let me bring these up. Um, so uh, round two review with my round three predictions. Basically, uh, game five, Shane versus Miles, CSM versus Eldar. Um, deployment, as you can tell, CSM's on the line, ready to go. Um, they've got the egg up here, uh, the Forge Fiend. Um, they've got some other spiders down. they got the Rhino here. Um, this is an interesting mission because you score three for holding an objective and three for empowering it with a character. So, you know, primary is very interesting on this map because, you know, you score three for your home, and then the center objectives can be worth quite a bit of points. So you can tell by the Eldari deployment, you know, obviously much more conservative. Um, tons of stuff on the CSM side and Deep Strike. Uh, and, you know, a fair bit for the for the Eldar, but a lot of shootings on the board of the Eldar. You know, sort of what I'm going to say is a key moment in this game. One of the things I took away from this game. Um, and one of the things you'll see is the Wraith Guard block moved up when uh, they actually phantasmed forward um, and ki almost killed uh, the Forge Fiend after the Forge Fiend uh, hurt them, uh, took out a few units. But that block is so resilient. But the real key moment here is if you see this dark commune, uh, I believe, or no, a cursed cultist um, blob right here in the middle, this thing is packed with a crazy amount of models. Yes, it gives a blast, but it's just so hard to remove you really really have to focus fire it to get it down and if not they just keep coming back they just keep coming back and as you can tell it just sat here in the middle of the board and you know the csm owned this part of the board um <clears throat> i could have brought in some more slides i wanted to make this a quick video um you know there was some talons warp talons brought down up here in round two you know the blitz were brought down here on the bottom objective Rhino went straight up the gut um, to challenge this Warwalker, you know, and until the end of the game, like this Rhino didn't die. And these, you know, I think these Blitz actually ended up staying there, but, or, and then in round three, another set of Blitz came down, you know, the Terminators came down, and that's another super hard block to remove. But you just have this, this accursed cultist blob, and all it did was go from here to there to back. Right. And and it just held these objectives. And you can sort of tell, you know, by by round um, two, uh, Shane's sort of getting a bit of a lead here. And it's because of the primary, because he's got a character on the middle. It's He's empowering those objectives and he stickies the home objective. And, you know, he just he's got nurglings up at the top. He's got nurglings at the bottom. He's just keeping Eldar out of this zone. Now, they did get a little deep strike right in here at the bottom, but it, it wasn't enough to, to do a, a significant uh, enough damage. Um, yes, the Wraith Guard uh, were key, but I, you know, if, if I was Miles, I think I would have had them behind this ruin on the line and, you know, for, you know, basically in the middle of the board. Right, he he just got kept out of the middle of the board until too late in the game, and it cost him on the primary. The one thing for Miles, I will say that he did get a little bit shafted on is he got a lot of secondary pulls, either in the wrong turn or just something he couldn't score, and uh, his dice went a little bit south on him uh, near the end. But you know, um, it was a great game fought by both sides. You can see here in the final, seventy six uh, sixty two. Um, but you could just see, you know, 12 on primary for Shane in round three. And you can see this just build up. And then, you know, obviously with Eldari going second, um, they were able to score at the end of their uh, turn uh, in the last one. And, you know, he was able to just sort of focus fire down that block, which got him assassination. And then also he took an objective so he could get storm hostile. But, um, you know, two on investigate signals round before two on no prisoners, you know, um, 
really tough secondary picks, uh, but this was really uh, played well by Shane. He just kept putting enough on the board to hold the elder back and just just yeah he died like he was getting withered down every single turn but he just kept him back kept him back kept him back and kept that primary scoring um so uh hats off the shane so i predicted a csm win uh i got it uh we'll see uh what, what happens at the next game all right game six Denver scary um I predicted a Votan win. I just the list has got so much firepower. Um, it's it's a it's a very hard list to play into. Uh, but the Black Templar are no slouches, um, as you know. We see here on the deployment, Black Templar <clears throat> ready to go. Dreadnoughts on the line. Um, you have the Sword Brethren in the middle with Helbrick. You know that one Gary his first game against Liam, uh, taking out the um, uh, the Satan. Uh, turn one, I guess. And, um, you know, he's got his two world ones in the back that kind of keep you honest. And he, Gary used these to great effect. He was taking these bikes out. He knew with the Votan, he had to take the bikes. And you can just see how much Votan are off the board, right? There's there's literally half the army. It's like a th just under a 1,000 points. Um, and then the reserves for Gary, you know, he's got some Centurions, I believe, and some Aggressors. Um, but again, you know, a lot of Votan off the board. Dreads are poised and ready to go. You got Infiltrators in the back keeping that 12-inch Deep Strike bubble. You know, also very hard for... Um, uh, the Votan to get back there. And yeah, um, the next, the, uh, this shouldn't say anything, but the key moment really for this was, so Dan had a Sagittar, uh, in the center of the, the board because he had drawn, uh, era denial and, uh, I believe deployed teleport homers. And he, I don't know, maybe that's on the first page. No, it's not quite there yet. Um, so he parked the Sagittar in there to get those. The challenge was, it's Gary hit a 12-inch uh, charge. And the Black Templar and the Sword Brethren wrapped the Sagittar. Then uh, killed it. And then when Dan piled out, he had to use Desperate Breakout. I believe he lost one or two guys. Got the got the uh, Votan guys out, uh, the 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 I believe the Warriors, um, and then a key moment came up in the game, and that was there's a Black Templar stratagem that allows you to hold people in combat on a four up. Now, if you're in a certain um, vow, because Black Templars take vows, it's a three up. Now. Uh, the big thing came up was this squad is in double vow, but the vow that keeps them on the three up was not active for the full army. And that was huge because the stratagem says the vow has to be active for the whole army. And that what that allowed, what happened was is Gary fell into the warriors, tied them up to try to keep them in combat so that that block could not get shot next turn. And what happened was, is he rolled a three, and they had to check the rules, and the Votan were allowed to fall back. Now that block is in the middle. It's exposed. What's going to happen, right? So basically, this is why I say it's sort of a key moment. As you can tell, there is one Sword Brethren left. Uh, I think that's actually a, another character. Um, this thing got pummeled from every side. Uh, getting shot at, and then uh, Dan charged in with uh, the Hearth Guard and just was able to pick up that block. And losing that uh, challenge piece in the middle then allowed Dan to really set the presence. And, you know, S Sacco's army is, and Gary's army is very heavy dreadnought. So, you know, Playing a lot of dreadnoughts and ninths, you know, they're tough, they're great, but they can't be everywhere. They're not big, right? They're, you, you know, you really have to be careful with them. And so you can just tell here by the end of the game, um, you know, it started off, you know, Dan getting the, the good uh, secondaries. Uh, Gary was pulling good secondaries as well. Um, and then, but just like, you know, five, 
and then six on primary, 12 on primary, 12 on primary. And it was, there's just vote hand everywhere. And unfortunately, um, you know, with those double uh, judgment tokens, they just, you know, it's bad. They just point at a unit and they're like, plus one to hit, plus one to wound and go to town. And they have a lot of tricks where the bikes have searchlights and they have different scanners so they ignore cover or if you're stealth or plus one in the stealth like that's the one thing about votan is that they didn't need a lot to be really competitive um but when they got their blow up the, the being able to put four double judgment tokens on things was massive so as you could tell just the the black templars just couldn't hold up to the heat and um you know, uh, Dan was able to just control those primary points and 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 get ahead of uh, Gary after sort of the second turn. And, like, the second turn was sort of his go turn. He really put the hurt onto Gary. Um, and Gary, you know, just, just started getting withered down um, near the end. So uh, great game by both of them. Gary's a great player, great tournament player. Um, I think, uh, you know, again, this could have swung either way. Like, he rolls a four, that unit's tied up, it doesn't get killed off the board. You know, when that happened, you know, it really like when when it looked like it was gonna stay tied up, it totally messed with Dan's game plan. So Dan was like, Oh my god. And you know what? There was a great showing of sportsmanship where when Dan came out of the transport. If he had known some of these things, he had he would have placed his units in a different position. Gary allowed him to take it back. He was able to put it where he needed to, but then Gary still fell into them and then was trying to use the strat. He ended up rolling a three versus a four. You know, that's sort of the key moment because if that unit stays there, the next turn they're in they're in miners' back line, right? They're just leapfrogging across the board. So um, you know, I think that was that was a huge play in the game and, and it, you know, it showed. But uh great game by both. Dan played really well, Gary played really well. And uh yeah, so basically that's gonna set us up uh for tomorrow, the finals. Uh Saturday, uh or sorry, not Saturday, um Monday, ten thirty AM Pacific. We have Shane CSM versus Dan's uh League of Votan. Again, uh game seven and finals. Um, of this little tournament. Uh, depending on how this all shakes out, we look like we might do this in December. Uh, November, we have actually our own GT running, uh, which is sold out uh, November 18th uh, here in Aldergrove, Langley, uh, BC. Uh, we've got 36 players, I believe, already. We might even kick it up uh, a couple more. We just have to uh, see what we can fit in the hall. Um, again, here's Shane's CSM list. You know, this accursed cultist uh, blob is so hard to remove. Um, I think Shane said that, you know, the one mistake he did on them is he made them undivided. He needed to make them Nurgle. Uh, I think a couple more things in the list could have been Nurgle just because that strat just not to be shot with outside of 12. It's huge. It's huge, especially with a blob like this, which is already hard to remove. Um, but no, this is a great list. You know, Venom Crawlers for pressure, Obliterators that just don't blit. You know what I mean? They'll just take stuff out uh and yeah and then the nurgling is just to, to stop the deep striking and uh pressure uh side of the board um then you get dan's list the votan um again the characters the hearth guard you know this fit there's 25 hearth guard in this list that is a lot of grenades a lot of pla uh the it's not plasma um Volkite, um, and then, you know, you've got uh, the Thunderkin, again, anti-vehicle, um, and then the bikes, just do bikes stuff, right? And they have all the, the, the tips and the tricks. Same with the Land Fortress scanners and everything. Ignore cover, you know. Uh, when you're AP1 and you ignore cover, that's pretty big. I mean, it's, it's AP2, right? I mean, um, it's uh, for a lot of armies. And, you know, the Sagittar are fast. They're able to scout, bike scout. Everything scouts. So this is a, this is a good list. Um, my prediction. Um, I hate Votan with a passion. Other than that, I think Dan's a great player. I just think I just I just hate Votan with a passion. Um, I'm Team CSM. I'm on Shane's team to win this. Um, 
even though I hate CSM, I don't hate them as much as I, I hate the Votan. Um, but again, this is a great practice for these guys that are taking this stuff to Kippers. I'm taking my Custodes to Kippers. Uh, we're going to see how we do. Um, but yeah, uh, please join us for the final tomorrow. I'm going to do another follow-up video uh, after the final, just uh, see how that game went. And uh, and if you guys really like, like, subscribe, uh, all of the above. And, uh, yeah. And then if you're able to, we'd love you to be a member, um, on YouTube. It helps us provide content like this and, um, you know, join our discord, you know, all the links are in the, are in the video. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit more social media presence in the future, but you know, uh, if you like what you uh, see, please subscribe and, uh, join the member, uh, membership. Um, but yeah, have yourself a great evening guys.